Good afternoon. Every Sunday, I'm joined by a celebrity, former politician, sports personality, or someone who's got a fascinating career. And take a look at life after the job. We talk highs, lows, and lessons learned, and what comes next on the outside. And this week, life after the royals. I'm joined by a man who was a butler to the Prince of Wales from 2004 until 2011. And I'm thrilled to say that Grant Harold joins me in the studio this afternoon. Hello. Yeah, no, no. Hello. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, how did you get to become a butler? Uh, it was a, an ambition from a, a youngster. I watched a documentary in the early 1990s all about the Queen and the royal family. And I remember saying to my father, how do you become part of that? And he said, you either work for them or you marry into the family. And I did think about who I could marry. Mm. Uh, I was about 14 at this point. Uh, and then I penned two letters to the Queen, still got them. And the Queen's lady in waiting wrote back. And I think I even sent a photograph just so she knew what I looked like really? with the possibility one day I'd get a job. And then I watched the movie Remains of the Day, mm. which was obviously about uh, Stephen, Stevens, the butler with Anthony Hopkins. And that kind of was what made this dream of becoming a butler. It was either that or an actor. And even my career's teacher, felt that the, the role of a butler um, might be more difficult than that of an actor, which made me kind of even more determined to go down that, that role. And, and it's an, an amazing, it's been an amazing career. Well, what is it about being a butler that you like? I can't think of anything worse <laughs> than serving a load of people and telling me what to do. I'd end up, you know, trying to poison them or something. Not literally, but I probably would end up fe feeling quite bitter. I think, I think the thing is, it's not what you kind of see in the movies any longer. It's, it's very different. It's almost a kind of personal assistant, if you like. And as a youngster, I always enjoyed, it sounds strange, but I enjoyed housework. I enjoyed kind of help my parents with errands around the house. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed laying tables. My parents were very strict about kind of the etiquette, or especially around Christmas time, you know, sitting down at the table and, and that kind of thing. And so it was kind of drummed into me. So this fascination was something I thought would be fun to actually experience it and see what it's, what it's like. And, and as I said, it was, it's been an amazing um, career. And there's been, with any job, there's good you know, highs and lows. But I still sometimes pinch myself, even now, when I see footage of the Queen or a member of the royal family. Gosh. And I think how lucky I was to spend time with them in their homes, you know, looking after them. Now, this lovely lady you've brought with you, is this your wife? No, I was going to say, lucky woman. She's got somebody who likes to cook, clean, and wait on the no, hand and foot. That was she's, perfect. No, she's a very, very dear Goodness friend. I, I always, I always jokingly <laughs> call her my, my, my lady. Well, actually, she always says she's my lady in waiting. So at last, I've now also got a, a lady in waiting, apparently. Oh, that's fabulous. So you got to meet, obviously, and work with the royal family, and, and and talk to me about some of the things that you you would sort of do. Give us an example of your day. The, the kind of day, it's kind of what you've seen, if you've seen any of the kind of documentaries, it's very much kind of that, you're there to kind of support them. So from the, obviously the minute from when they're up to the minute they kind of go to bed, you're there to kind of support them, uh, look after guests, obviously serve meals, drinks. So it's very much that kind of traditional side. Mm. But the, the other part that some people might not realise, it's also as it's like the personal assistant role. So dealing with phone calls, uh, running errands. In my career, before I worked for the Raws, I, I was a butler for the Dukes of Bedford. Um, two, uh, sadly, uh, one of the Dukes passed and, and his son inherited. And while I was with that family, I even helped look after the children. So you kind of, you kind of the idea is you can almost do anything within reason. And, and I've enjoyed that. You know, that's what I, I kind of get a lot of fun out of. And, you know, people always think that it's, you know, with the long hours and the long days, there's no fun. And there is. I mean, I've had some amazing uh, experiences from uh, attending the wedding, the second wedding of the Prince of Wales and the oh, Duchess really? of Cornwall, to Duchess dancing. Of, so that's Camilla. She, you you Camilla, went to the wedding. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I got invited to the. So you've obviously spoken to Camilla and met Camilla, I Oh, yeah. Because yeah. they don't even seem to talk to each other. When, I, <laughs> when you talk about they say, oh, well, I had to tell my person, my personal assistant, to tell that personal assistant. You probably talk to them more than they talk to each other. <laughs> Maybe I do. I, I suppose probably. in a way, you we probably do. But no, it's, it's quite interesting because uh, I only knew, I mean, people assumed that I knew Princess Diana. And, and sadly, Princess Diana um, had passed about seven years before I joined the household. Right. In fact, the day I actually went in uh, to train as a butler, which was in Scotland originally, uh, uh, Ben Alder Lodge, uh, an estate, it was the day after the Princess of Wales died when I actually began the career. Uh, and I remember on the, the, obviously it was in all the news, mm -hmm. and I remember on that day, even though it was day one, I thought, for me, the, the, the kind of the best part of, of the career would be to look after the Prince of Wales and his family and the boys. 
And I think that, well, that came true within about seven years. So you were looking after Prince Harry and, and William? Absolutely, yeah. So I don't was... know whether I can ask you, but what do you make of the whole thing? <laughs> Harry going abroad like that with Meghan? I, did you, did you, you never met Meghan or anything? No, I didn't. And the, the really difficult part for me was when everything was kind of breaking about the, obviously the breakdown in the relationship and everything, I was denying it because, because I knew them and knew how close they are. I kept kind of saying, no, they're very, they're very, you know, they're very close, you know, um, this just wouldn't happen. So it just didn't make it just didn't make sense. I see. So they so they're not like because they don't seem very close now. And sadly, that's what it's appears, and, that, and that's what I find really difficult for me to kind of to take in because, as I said, looking after them and and working with them and seeing how close the two of them were to seeing what we all see today, which is obviously where they're not as close. It is sad and, and difficult. When they had the unveiling of the statue, um, was a few months ago, yeah. and we saw them together, I was I was glad to see them together. And I kind of hope maybe that's an opportunity for them to, to speak and to, to resolve things. And maybe they have started to resolve things. I mean, obviously yeah. we don't know, but you kind of hope that maybe they Do you think Harry seems have. as though he's changed? Um, I think when I, do you know it's interesting, when I watch any of them, they've, they've all They've grown up, haven't they? Yeah. I mean, when when I was there, Harry would have been in his late teens, early twenties, and and now he's a you know he's got a family. Uh, same with Prince William. But you you of course they've grown up. I do feel very lucky that when I worked for their father, and obviously they were under one roof. You know, you had the the Duchess of of Cornwall and, and Prince William and Harry, and I feel quite lucky to have actually had the opportunity to to look after all of them as a family because that is impossible now because they've got their own families. And somebody said to me a wee while ago that if the, the line of succession goes away it should and Prince Charles becomes king and then latterly Prince William, there will be not many people that have said they've looked after three monarchs. I mean, this is many years to come, hopefully. And you see, you do feel quite privileged to have really? actually looked after the Queen, Prince Charles and Prince William. So you, but you left, you left the household 2011. Mm. Why did you leave? 2011. The position, there's no longer, well, there was no longer at that point a so butler. Yeah, so it was, yeah, so the job was done away. And it was funny because at the time, they obviously, um, there was alternatives, you know, they'll cost to give you alternatives. But for me, it was kind of, do you know when you've done so much in a career and you think, is this the best time to look for something different? Mm. And that's when I decided that to maybe change the career a little bit and go into my other passion, which was etiquette and of course, training butlers. I mean, even in the household, we used to have butlers come in and I would be part of, you know, help with the training. And I wondered if I could use this to, one, with the etiquette to help others that might meet members of the royal family and train up a new generation of butlers. And these uh, classes um, actually began uh, in about 2011, 2012. And they started in, um, initially it was going to be in a little hotel in, in Tetley, and it's, it's grown, it's gone from that to the, the classes now run at Blenheim Palace, wow. uh, the Ritz Hotel, uh, I do them oh uh, down, obviously in London. Um, I've travelled the world, I've been invited on all, all sorts of kind of talk shows and things to give demonstrations from Kerry Clarkson to Jerry Springer. And my other passion is media work, and I've been working in the media since I was 19 when I featured in a reality show called Country House, which was all about Woburn Abbey. Uh, that was before, obviously, I joined the household. And so for the last 20 years, I've, I've kind of, um, is it dabbled in media, I should say? Mm -hmm. And especially in the last 10 years, I've become a kind of royal commentator. So I seem to go on quite a few shows, obviously including this show, uh, to talk about uh, members of the royal family, etiquette, and all things um, butlers. So it's, it's, quite, um, it's quite a whirlwind when I kind of think what I've all achieved in, in that. In the last, especially in the last ten years. Wow! Uh, you, didn't you team up with uh, Princess Katrina? Princess Katrina, who is uh, a cousin of Prince Charles, and uh, it's it's quite amazing because it, it is I, again that's quite interesting because with Prince Katrina we we're very much a, a team, and it's quite interesting that I've gone from actually if if you like seven to members of the royal family to actually working with um, a cousin of the royal family. So it's quite, uh, it's quite, in fact, we were working together uh, last week. We were doing a, a, a course at Thornbury Castle, which is up in Bristol. And um, we had some uh, wonderful uh, clients um, from Sweden and uh, they wanted to do some classes because it was their daughter's, it was a surprise 15th birthday. And it was, it was great fun, you know, but this is what's interesting. My clients can be, uh, it can be royals, we've had royals, we've had uh, celebrities, we've had VIPs, and we've had children, and they're always fun. So the etiquette that you would teach is what sort of thing? Would it be how to 
how to, you know, how you should eat when you're, you know, what kind of things would you be teaching people? It's kind of, it, it, it's things about how to, how to sit down at a table, which cutlery to use, how to use the glass, which glass to use. Uh, afternoon tea is very popular is for the etiquette class. Oh. Et when it comes to afternoon tea, it's the most popular classes that I do. And those are the classes that most times I'll be asked to even travel to other countries to go and host an afternoon tea class. And which is, is quite extraordinary because it's, it's one, I think it's one of the most easiest things to teach because it is just sitting down having an afternoon tea and it's running through uh, how you eat the sandwiches, the scones, oh. the cakes, those kind of things. Sounds great. <laughs> I'll just have my afternoon tea, I'll just eat. I'll be great at just the eating bit, but that's about it. So are there some things in etiquette that you see that you think, Ugh. so for me, it's when I used to work at Pizza Express as a waitress, this was what they taught you. They taught you that this is your half of the glass mm -hmm. and this is the customer's half of the glass. And the thing I hate most is when somebody hands me a glass with their hand over like that, yes. I just think, yeah. where have your hands been? <laughs> is that a, a thing? You know, it, it I think when ticket. it comes to the actual, when I train the butlers, I always say don't, especially with wine glasses, for example, I say don't touch the actual bowl of the glass. I always mm. do it from the stem, which is, of course is technically how you're supposed to hold the glass, it? if it's the wine glass, if it's the white wine. And so I kind of train them. So what I do is I train the, the, the butlers to do it the same way that they would as a, as a guest. Mm. I think it's important that they understand how to be a, a guest as well as how to be uh, a butler. But it's, it's interesting because my students can be from all sorts of backgrounds. Um, I mean, international. We have mm -hmm. a lot of international students. I, last year, not last year, so two years ago, I teamed up with Holland America Seabon um, cruise ships, where I'm one of the, they call us celebrity conversationists, and I go on board and I entertain the guests. That's good. But I also have done training for them. And that's been interesting because that is a, a, a huge group of, of students from many different countries that all come together to work for these amazing ships. And I've had the opportunity to, to put a training programme together for them. And it, but you've got to remember that each country has got its own etiquette, it's got its own ways of doing things. So even though I'm teaching the British way. Mm -hmm. I'm always reminding them you've got to remember that in other countries there is ways to act and behave. And something we do here, which is very much etiquette in another country, could be a, a no-no. It could even insult another country. So, so is it true then if you say in Japan, where is it? Where if you burp after a meal, it's a good thing? Apparently, this is this is what I've heard is that you know if you if you there's things like that that it seemed to be uh, is polite. Well, could you imagine if you were sitting at the table with a member of the royal family and you said, <laughs> you I, think, I think you'd be probably very quickly shown the, the, the door or, or you'd probably want to blame one of the coggies or something. You wouldn't want to admit that it was actually, it was actually you. Well, I'd fit in just <laughs> fine somewhere. You can belch and that's a, really good, it's a good sign, especially the other things as well, but I won't say. <laughs> but isn't it, it's really great to talk to you. If people want to find out more about your etiquette classes, are they open to people? And if so, they are, do you uh, have a website? Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. I've got the, the Royal Butler um, is, my, is my website, therawalbutler.co.uk and I've got the, the etiquette classes and the, the media work because I get booked, I've been doing some presenting for different shows as the Royal Butler, weirdly, when people kind of book the, the butler for the kind of humour um, side of it because I do a bit of comedy as well on, under that. Um, but yeah, people can find all the information about me on there, butler school, etiquette or media, media things as well. Well Grant, thank you very much. Fascinating. Thank you. Fascinating, right, that's Grant Harold. He was a former royal butler to Prince Charles, Prince William and Prince Harry from 2004 to 2011. Super. Right, coming up, it's the Great British Debate this Saturday. I'm asking, are you confident people will follow the COVID rules? From Tuesday, it'll be mandatory to wear a face mask in shops and on public transport in England. But first, let's get your latest weather.